Well, scientists have captured the first image of the monster black hole lurking at the heart of our galaxy. The black hole, known as Sagittarius A, lies 27,000 light years from the sun. Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, joins me now live to discuss. Brad, good afternoon. What does this black hole image tell us? Yeah, look, you know, it's been an exciting uh, census release uh, the other night. And look, you know, we've had hints for a couple decades that this supermassive black hole was here by monitoring uh, orbits of stars near this thing and seeing how fast they moved in the gravitational pool needed for it. But we hadn't had that direct image. And one of the key aspects that we've always wanted to know, not just about a, our black hole, but all black holes, is this key aspect called the event horizon. And that is the point, that is kind of that central black hole point where once you get there, not even light can escape. Now, one of the other interesting things that we saw in this image is it's kind of tilted at an angle. Uh, now, that's not so unsurprising, but it is important to see because what it's telling us is the black hole is kind of lying at a slight incline or slight angle with respect to the rest of the galaxy. Uh, now, this is always important for understanding how these black holes come to be and be assembled, uh, how the galaxies themselves form around it. So it's an exciting time where we never really thought we'd be able to probe the immediate environment around it, but now with this technology, we can. And, and the image has confirmed many predictions, as you said, but were there actually any surprises? Yeah, you know, one of the things was exactly this incline. You know, we also didn't know, again, we only we always thought it'd be one, but, you know, we knew it weighed four million times the mass of our sun. It could have been two right next to each other, weighing two million times each. Uh, again, we saw one, so that confirmed the former. We didn't see any other activity come out of it, so we actually do know some black holes emit light. In fact, it's because as the stars kind of fall into the black hole, they bounce off. There was a belief that we could have had this small, what we call jet, shooting out of our black hole. We didn't see it in this image. The next step also will probably reveal some exciting things. We do know because our black hole is much smaller than others, uh, it does activity on the scale of hours to days. This project has been imaging this black hole for a huge amount of time, so hopefully they'll start to gather enough data that they have a little bit of a, a movie uh, or a, you know, kind of time lapse of what's happening around this black hole. And then we can get an idea of how active uh, are black holes in terms of swallowing stars and gas. So there's kind of, now that we know it's there and what it looks like, we can start ans asking some very interesting questions uh, that this project should hopefully start to answer. Fingers crossed. It certainly is a fascinating image. Now, Brad, plants have been grown in lunar soil for the first time ever. I I've got to ask, what, what would the soil be like? Yeah, and this is the thing is when the Apollo missions took um, rocks and samples back, they've stored most of it. Now, we do know lunar soil is similar to Earth, but it's weaker in a lot of nutrients. So there's a lot less nitrogen. Um, there is some iron in the soil. Now, we get that on Earth. Uh, there is carbon in the soil as well. So we know that that's similar, but it's also different. Now, again, none of this is surprising. But the real question has always been that we've always grown analog. So we've made samples based on what we think the composition was. They actually took direct moon dust that has been sealed for 50 or so years, put it in these vials to grow plants. Now, this is a really big step because they didn't you know, use fertilizer. They didn't add supplements to the ground. They just said, is there at least enough to get it started? Because if they can at least see there's enough of the ratios of the critical elements in the soil to get these plants growing, then we can add the things that may be missing. And people are looking at how do we fertilize moon dust? Can we add things like nitrogen to the soil to boost any growth? So there's definitely the start of what's become a very important topic of as we send humans back to the moon, making sure that there is food they can grow in the moon dust because we don't want to bring dirt from the earth because that's a lot of weight to bring. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll be very curious to see how the plants actually grow and, and what yeah. they're like, Brad. Uh, now, the biggest quake on Mars recording a magnitude 5 has been detected. Yeah, Mars quakes uh, have been monitored now for about a couple of years since NASA's InSight mission landed uh, in 2018. And we're starting to find a lot of interesting things. So we found a lot of these Mars quakes, but most of them are, are weak, magnitude three or four. 
But we also know that we expect them to get bigger. So again, if we think about uh, earthquakes like Mars quakes, we use a kind of this magnitude or Richter scale where a five is 10 times more powerful than a four. And we do know, again, even from the, uh, the Victorian earthquake uh, a number of months ago, that when you start to get into the magnitude fives, you start to actually get some real rumbling going on. So this magnitude five quake was one that uh, was actually quite sizable. And this is obviously going to be not just interesting for understanding the history of the planet, because we want to know, is it active underneath Mars surface? Why is it apparently less active than Earth? And this tells us a lot about potentially what's underneath and the history of Mars. But if you're also going to start sending people to Mars and they're going to be going on the places that have magnitude five or so earthquakes or Mars quakes, you need to be able to build structures that survive and withstand that. So this is really critical stuff, not just to knowing Mars, but future planning for astronauts. Absolutely. Brad Tucker, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Take care.